Hi, greetings. I'm Sir Bren, and we are now on our quarter four, week four of basic calculus. Our lesson for today is about Riemann sum and definite integrals. These are the learning competencies. Number one, to be able to solve the region using area calculations. This is by Riemann sum. And number two, to become familiar with the procedure of definite integral. Okay, class, no? just a recap. We learned in our previous math subjects no? that in solving the area of irregular shape figures, like for example here, let's say uh, like a shape of a fish. No? Pardon my drawing, no, class? Let's say we want to solve this area of a irregular shape figure consisting of a semicircle, a square, and a uh, trapezoid. So all we have to do is uh, we add all the areas of each shape. Area is equals to the area of the semicircle, which is pi r squared over 2. No? So ito yon, yung sa square naman, plus s squared. Okay? And then dun sa ating trapezoid is h times b sub 1 plus b sub 2 over 2. So ganito natin kinukuha yung kanyang area okay to continue what is riemann sum riemann sum according to www.brilliant.org is an approximation of a region's area obtained by adding up the areas of multiple simplified slices of the region it is applied in calculus to formalize the method of exhaustion used to determine the area of a region this process yields the integral, which computes the value of the area exactly. Similarly, Riemann sum is used to find the approximate area of the region under the curve by breaking up the area into rectangles no? and finding the sum of the areas of those rectangles. Mamaya gagawa tayo. No? Okay, take note that habang papaliit ang mga rectangles under the curve, thus dumadami yung mga rectangles under the curve, it becomes more closer to the exact answer or the exact area, which is the concept of Riemann sum. And by the way, Riemann sum is named after George Bernhard Friedrich Riemann, a German mathematician. The formula for the Riemann sum is this one, no? where delta x, this one, is b minus a over n. a and b are intervals and the n here is the subintervals or the number of rectangles under the curve. And then yung f of x sub i, this is the height of the rectangle. And then by the way, yung ating delta x is the width. No? This is the width of the rectangle. So for example, kung meron tayong isang rectangle under the curve, this portion is delta x no and this one the height is f of x we have an example here no iso solve natin siya first using or applying the definite integral procedure and then next is applying the riemann sum okay our example our objective is to get the area under the curve of y is equals to x squared from 0 to 8 so, ito yung function natin, class, no? yung given. And then, this is the graph. And then, we have the interval from 0 to 8. So, it is written as, we have 0, 8. This is A, and this is B. So, before we apply Riemann sum, we are going to solve this using the definite integral procedure. Okay, we will be using the formula, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus 2. No, the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which is this one. No? The definite integral from A to B, A is the lower limit and B is the upper limit of f of x dx is equal to big F of B minus big F of A, where f of x is equal to the integral of f of x dx. So yung ating given class, no, yung function na given natin kanina, is y is equals to f of x is equals to x squared. So using the formula, 
yung A natin is 0, and then yung B natin is 8. Okay? And then yung F of X natin is X squared. And then BX. So getting the integral of X squared, so di ba sabi natin magpa plus 1 tayo sa exponent, no? 2 plus 1 is 3, and then just copy the, the exponent, and it becomes the denominator. And then, we will evaluate this from 0 to 8. Where 0 is the lower limit and 8 is the upper limit. So this is how it is done. We substitute this one, yung ating upper limit, dito sa ating 8 to x. So 8 raised to 3 divided by 3. So this is for the upper limit. So yung sa lower limit, alagay naman natin is minus, no? We get the difference. 0 substitute to x becomes 0 raised to 3 divided by 3. Okay, 8 raised to 3 is 512 divided by 3. And then ito naman, 0 raised to 3 is 0. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So wag din na natin susulat yun. So, ang answer na lang natin is 512 divided by 3 in two decimal places is 170.67. And then, ang units natin, since area, square units. So, the area using the definite integral procedure is 170.67 square units. So, let's see, no? Kung malapit yung Riemann sum procedure dun sa ating nakuha ngayon. We apply the midpoint method or rule dito sa ating Riemann sum. For your information, the midpoint method or rule has the most accurate result than computing using the right and left endpoint sum method. So, dadagdagan natin to ng isa pang given. So, let's say we want to draw four rectangles beneath or underneath the curve. Applying the midpoint rule, hanapin natin yung gitna from 0 to 2. So, yung gitna ng 0 to 2 is 1. So, nandito yung 1, di ba? Okay. Let's place 1 here. And then, yung gitna ng 2 and 4 is 3. Nandito siya. So, let's uh, write 3. Yung gitna ng 4 and 6 is 5. Gitna ng 6 and 8 is 7. And then, let's draw rectangles. So, ito yung sinasabi nating n is equals to 4. We have 4 rectangles. And then, ang midpoint natin na nakuha is ito. Ano? Yung pagitan ng 0 to 2 is 1. And then, 2 to 4 is 3. Pagitan ng 4 and 6 is 5. And pagitan ng 6 and 8 is 7. So, ito gagamitin natin itong apat. And also, take note, yung given din natin is the interval 0, 8. Diba? Ito yun. From 0 to 8. So, yung 0 is A and yung 8 is B. We use the formula for the area under the curve for Riemann sum as so the summation of delta x times f of x sub i where i is 1 to n. Okay, so solve muna natin itong delta x. No? Delta x, ang formula ng delta x is B minus A over N. Yung A natin is uh, 0 and yung B natin is 8. Substitute natin yan. 8 minus 0. And then yung given natin na N is 4. So divided by 4. So 8 minus 0 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay, so we substitute 2 dito. No? So yung susulat natin, 2. And then, yung f of x sub i, meron tayong apat, no? First is yung unang midpoint. Di ba yung mga midpoint natin is 1, 3, 5, and 7. So, this is written as f of i plus f of 3 plus f of 5 and then plus f of 7. And then, we substitute the value of the midpoints. Doon sa given natin na y is equals to f of x is equals to x squared. So, yung sa 1, 1 squared. No? We, substitute, we substitute 1 doon sa x, 1 squared. And then, we have 3 
squared plus 5 squared. So, take note, dyan galing yun, ano? And then, lastly, 7 squared. We compute the values inside the bracket. Ito is 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49. So, ibig sabihin, this is 2 times sum of 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49 is 84. So, 2 times 84 is 168. And then, our uh, unit of measurement is square units. Okay, we compared this dun sa nakuha natin sa definite integral procedure, yung 168, ito, no? compared to 170.67. Mas makikita natin na the definite integral procedure will give the more accurate answer. And then, yung Riemann sum is makita natin is less yung kanyang answer, no? Less yung kanyang area. So, take note that if you want the answer using the Riemann sum to be more accurate or malapit dito sa answer natin sa definite integral procedure, is you increase the number of rectangles inside. So, in that way, yung Riemann sum, this 168 units, will get closer to the more exact answer na 170.67. So that is the concept of the Riemann sum. Thank you very much class and hope you have learned from this lesson. I will see you on my next video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you class and God bless you all.